I mean, like like Elon with Neuralink and those companies, I think it's, I mean, that's just taking this like super far off. I mean, maybe it'll be ready in like a couple decades. I mean, there will probably be interesting use cases in the near term for people who have injuries or something like that. What time will you be home? In about an hour. Do not make me laugh. That's the first time we've ever had a conversation using this system. Mark Zuckerberg is known as Elon Musk's biggest rival of this time. After that satellite crashed because of Elon Musk's rocket, we saw controversy between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg every day. But there's something that you have to know about Elon Musk and Mark's deal. Welcome to SpaceX News, your one-stop destination for all the exciting news and latest information about SpaceX. If you're a SpaceX fan, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you'll be notified. Elon Musk and Mark have been feuding since 2017, when Elon Musk's rocket collided with a Facebook satellite. After the controversial tweet journey started, Mark Zuckerberg updated and is in favor of artificial intelligence and is trying to make a better artificial intelligence for the future. Elon Musk, however, expresses his concern about the artificial intelligence singularity, which has the potential to dominate the entire world and extinguish the human race. Zuckerberg is dealing with algorithms that are failing to stop the spread of harmful content, while Elon Musk is with software that is yet to drive a car in the ways he's frequently promised, and now he hopes to control human brains. Having hundreds of needles injected into your brain may sound more like torture than treatment, but the process is already allowing some patients with severe paralysis to control a robotic arm by thought alone with brain-machine interface technology. It's also known as BMI, which is a field of science that is small and relatively new, but maybe in the future it can change the world. But there are many benefits for people who cannot use their bodies for daily purposes and those who are unable to use them. Many billionaire companies are investing in projects like OpenAI, fearing they don't focus on upgrading artificial intelligence that replaces humans, but their aim is to make a better and enhanced AI. Many companies like Google's founder say in their autobiographies that they're very concerned that they might create something evil by accident. We are more likely to be an artificial robot than humans. We are robots that rule over the world. Big Tech is investing millions in the sector with the hope of creating a future where thought-controlled technology is everywhere. One where typing and texting are no longer necessary, but ethicists worry about a very different scenario. In a future where consumers become human hybrids or cyborgs, being free gives way to capitalist enslavement. BMI's most influential advocate is Elon Musk, who aims to achieve what he calls a sort of symbiosis between humans and artificial intelligence. But he's not alone anymore. Fellow billionaire Mark Zuckerberg now joins him, and the two are for the first time reading from the same script after a rather patchy past business relationship. Two minds may be better than one, but one mind connected to millions of others would be infinitely superior. That's the thinking behind several companies that are currently racing to link mind and machine by way of devices called brain-computer interfaces. The first person to put the functionality of a computer in your head would have a way for people to communicate seamlessly and instantly with whomever and whatever they want. Two figures are publicly leading that race. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg's clandestine projects known as Neuralink and Building 8 are respectively focused on approaches that will require brain surgery, according to researchers. All of these things look so dangerous to me, but the outcomes of these things look like a flippin' sci-fi movie. Elon Musk, the founder of Neuralink, stands to benefit the most. The Neuralink was designed to loosely emulate human brains. Deep learning artificial intelligence systems can spot tumors, drive cars, and write texts, showing spectacular results in a lab setting. It's already developed a good artificial intelligence that's being used in Tesla cars around the world, and they're thought of as the safest cars in the world. Elon Musk also aims for a future where artificial intelligence develops so much that they can rule on its use. Then, they might have at least something to protect humanity. Before the recent development, Zuckerberg and Elon Musk had a testy history of disagreeing about the potential of artificial intelligence. But in 2018, at the Viva Technology Conference in Paris, with Zuckerberg as the optimist and Musk as the prophet of doom, Zuckerberg ducked an opportunity to disagree with the Tesla and SpaceX boss instead of focusing on an area where the two tech titans have similar perspectives. I think that recently I've heard Elon Musk make a lot of the same points on this, and I've been trying to make it for a long time, Zuckerberg said, responding to a question about Musk's vocal opinions about the future of AI. 
A few years ago, Facebook, now Meta, disentangled itself from a nettlesome investigation by the Federal Trade Commission into how the company violated users' privacy. And then, with that manner now squarely behind it, Facebook stepped forward to share some information about its effort to read our minds. The company sponsored an experiment conducted by researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, in which they built an interface for decoding spoken dialogue from brain signals. The results were published in Natural Communication. The work itself is fascinating, as you might expect from the subject matter. Brain-computer interfaces aren't new, but the existing ones aren't particularly efficient, particularly those that don't involve drilling into your skull. Facebook's approach relies on high-density electrocorticography, which implants sensors in the brain and uses them to record brain activity, while Musk's high-profile entry into the neurotech certainly drew a lot of frenzies around the development of a possible human symbiosis with machines. He's not alone in Silicon Valley. In the same year that Neuralink was announced, Brian Johnson threw $100 million behind the kernel of a startup. He founded it to enhance human intelligence by developing brain implants capable of linking people's thoughts to computers. Musk's motivation is that people will need to become cyborgs to be relevant in an artificial intelligence age. Neuralink tries to tackle the novelties of cognitive augmentation in a bidirectional capacity to supplement the brain with computing power as well as the ability to communicate telepathically. Imagine that you can now simplify a complex mathematical equation without using a sophisticated scientific calculator or play a game without needing a sluggish, laggy middleman like a gaming console anymore or without a gaming setup. Despite both billionaires working hard and even teaming up to develop artificial intelligence, it remains a striking debate that every great innovation comes with a risk, especially when it's so novel that its long-term effects are not immediately understood. That opens doors to ethical debates on several dimensions. First and foremost is, of course, the psychological impact. The brain is a delicate and complex organ of a human being, and much of the science behind how it works is pretty much unknown. Secondly, when we try to invade our brain with a foreign object, how will the brain react to it? Can we generalize this reaction, or will the reaction differ from person to person? Elon Musk's joining of the BCI party can potentially accelerate technology development. However, before we can abandon our scientific calculators and communicate telepathically, let us first remind ourselves that any successful emerging technology should be developed responsibly without overstepping ethical lines, and Neuralink is no exception. On the other hand, Zuckerberg's careful move to find common ground with Musk appears to come at the right time because his research will play a big role in developing artificial intelligence. And whatever the findings, Elon Musk and Neuralink will be eager to find out. Will the two Silicon Valley billionaires revolutionize human-computer interaction with their researchers? If we ignore whatever happened in their rivalry, there is one thing that is certain. They both have accelerated artificial intelligence and human cyborg development. Soon, we'll see major, major changes in the world thanks to these two billionaires. Perhaps we should remember that this development has the potential to destroy the human race by inadvertently creating something evil, as Google's founders stated about their company's alphabet. It can become a virtue as well as a curse for humanity too. Moreover, it also depends on the person impact. So Neuralink, I think, at first will solve a lot of brain-related diseases. So uh, it could be anything from like autism, schizophrenia, memory loss. Like everyone experiences mem memory loss at, at certain points in, in age. Parents can't remember their, their kids' names and that kind of thing. So th there's I think, a tremendous amount of good that uh, Neuralink can do in solving uh, critical uh, critical damage to brain or the spinal cord. There's a lot that can be done to improve quality of life of individuals, and that will be those will be steps along the way. And then ultimately, it's intended to address the or the risk, the existential risk associated with uh, digital superintelligence.